guys, my name is Jason and my wife, Brooke, had an explant procedure where she had her breast implants removed uh, and blocked as well as a lift and she had some axillary lymph nodes removed uh, this past Friday, some suspicious uh, lymph nodes uh, by Dr. Dev in, in Miami this past Friday. But we live in Louisville, so we flew down uh, last Thursday. That's a whole nother conversation itself, the difficulty of connecting through O'Hare. By the way, if you ever have anywhere to get to and it's any sort of weather, I do not recommend connecting through O'Hare as much as I absolutely love Chicago and I'm from there. Total side note. So we had that done last Friday. It is now Tuesday. So Brooke's been healing for a little while. She's still got her drains in. She gets those out probably on Friday. And she just wanted me to do a quick video uh, about my thoughts about the whole, I guess the, the whole experience, so to speak. So if you have any follow-up questions for me to go into greater detail, any husbands want to reach out to me, uh, feel free to connect with me or Brooke and uh, I'm sure that we would uh, get the message. I don't know we're going to post this, but probably comment below also. Going into the procedure, I, I wouldn't say wary, but I think that um, I definitely thought that she needed to get them out. Uh, we've had two kids and I think that because I think regardless of all the stuff that's come out, with implants in terms of the possible toxicity and the leaking and things like that. Um, I think that cosmetically she wasn't happy, so something had to be done no matter what. So that's the first thing. And then of course, you know, all this stuff kind of has been coming out with uh, certain types of textured implants and other implants and, and um, we don't really know about what having something foreign in your body could it, could it have long-term effects? What is it doing? You know, I don't really listen to a lot of the advice in social media and a lot of those groups. I think that there is, there can be a lot of truth there, but I think there's a lot of hysteria. So I was always supporting her. I think that once she had convinced herself she needed them out, that I would support her. And I think that that's, that's great. I think that she needed them out no matter what. But I also always wanted to keep her level-headed. There's a possibility that something could be happening. And um, I'd be foolish to say otherwise. So she had done a lot of research and I was also a little bit wary about flying all the way down to Florida, but now looking back on it, I think it was the best decision ever, especially looking at other before and afters of, of, of some other surgeons that were local or, or in, in other areas. And the, um, the testimonials before and afters were not quite as impressive as the uh, plastic surgeon that we went to. So my thoughts afterwards were this was not only important for her to do, but it now makes sense on a lot of different levels of all of the symptoms that Brooke was having before. So for m I mean, months, almost since, I wouldn't say since I've known her, but I mean, you could attribute it to the fact that we've got two small kids and things like that, but she would wake up every morning, even after she would sleep like seven, eight hours, and she'd be freaking exhausted and in a bad mood and just groggy and want to just you know, almost just say, you know, I've got narcolepsy and I want to fall asleep all day. And it was, she just, it was like she had to add stimulants just to like get energy because she didn't know why she was so exhausted all the time. And honestly, we just chalked up to the fact that we got two crazy kids. And, uh, but, you know, looking back on it, she was never rested in the morning. Well, the, and I don't know if you guys have seen the video, but that, what, uh, the plastic surgeon went to Dr. Deb. He actually films a lot of the important parts of the procedure, um, not only for insurance purposes, but also for learning experiences. And what I thought was really impressive, and I don't think that, uh, and I will say this as a little caveat, um, what had happened to her implants, uh, I don't think necessarily, and again, I'm not an expert in plastic surgery, so I don't know necessarily if it was the fault of the, um, the surgeon who placed the implants, uh, I do know that she had tubular breasts before, so maybe there was it, it was a little bit compromising with where you put the um, implant, you know, above or below the muscle, all those things. But what Dr. Deb did find, I believe, is that one of the implants like had attached to her ribs, another had kind of attached to her uh, pec muscles, and it kind of made sense where like she could never do a push up, and uh, it was really hard for her to do push ups, but also. The first thing that she noticed, like after the anesthesia wore off, was she goes, for the, I can take a deep breath now. And so what had happened, I believe, is that her muscles, all the muscles that she'd used for breathing had kind of adjusted into these shorter breaths because 
it was probably pulling, the implants were pulling up and down her chest wall and her abdominal cavity and where in her, her pleural sacs. And so, and again, some of this terminology, again, I work up here with kids, so a lot of this is a little bit foreign to me, but that's the first thing she notices. I can take a deep breath now for the first time in ever. And to me, that was, and, and like a lot of you guys know, is that you know, for people that are apneic, if you have sleep apnea, if you're going to sleep at night and you are snoring and you're not exchanging oxygen, not only is that taking years off your life, but you're waking up exhausted, you're never rested, you're sick more, you're moody, and that is what Brooke felt. And I noticed it when we were in Florida, all of a sudden she's like rested, feeling good in the morning, waking up early, in a great mood, and it'll be interesting to see how it translates back up to Louisville, but I mean, that's the first thing that she noticed. So I think that it was also, it was, it was, it was important for her to do um, not only for peace of mind and, and for um, uh, the reasons that I talked about in terms of the, the possible toxicity, but the fact that you know she had 400, 400, 420 cc's, you know, 820, 40 cc on your chest, that's a lot. I mean, you'd feel those and they were really heavy. And, and now it makes sense that you're lugging around those all the time and that's just not normal. So is there a, a, another option for her to still feel pretty or beautiful and, um, and, and have it be her own, so to speak. And so he was able to do a lift as well. And of course, later after everything settles, there's always an option later years down the line. If you ever want, there's, there's procedures out now where they actually utilize your own fat, fat transfers. Um, you, I guess taking fat from other areas of your body, but I mean, I looked at her, I mean, they look, they look amazing. I mean, they look great. It's like she's back to her own own athletic self. And I think that that's amazing. Now, another thing, and I don't know if it's related or not, but, you know, she had a suspicious axillary lymph node. And she was having pain in this lymph node for months. And she had redness on her armpits that she couldn't explain and, like, pus coming. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And so that's another reason. Does that have anything to do with the implants? Maybe, maybe not. But we do know that when he went in there, he removed the lymph node and immediately her armpit felt better and the redness went away in like a day, which is crazy. Um, another thing my thoughts are is, is the, you know, she comes out, she got drains and a compression bra. And my other thought is that I think she thought she was going to be a lot more pain. Now they do give you a long acting, I don't know if it's a marking nerve lock or something so that it's more comfortable for you. But she didn't have to take any Percocet. She barely had to take Tylenol. Um, I think she said now that some of the nerve block was wearing away, now that it's like Tuesday, that she is feeling a little bit more, but she's been moving around a lot. And that's one thing that, that they always recommend is that you don't just, you know, you sleep elevated, but that you're you're walking around. You know, not going crazy and moving your arms or anything, but you that you're kind of, you're, you're allowing your body to, to heal. You're breathing and she's keeping her stress level low and she's eating really healthy this week. That's another thing, guys, uh, that, I, that I, my thoughts is that it's like she like wants to eat healthy, but it's also really good because it's helping her heal better. Um, the, my thoughts, I, the one thing is we had to figure out how to milk the drains. I don't know why it took me like a time or two, but that's probably the only thing is, um, you know, you get these two drains and um, you empty the drains out and you've got to write down how many cc's every day that it's draining. And I think by the time that you're draining less than 25 milliliter, uh, yeah, milliliters a, a day, then that's when the drains can come out. So I think maybe Brooks drains might come out tomorrow. Um, but as a husband and everything, um, I, I couldn't have been more impressed. Um, uh, in terms of insurance, I mean, regard, even if insurance didn't pay, I mean, and I, it, whether insurance covered it or not, to me, it's, it's, it's been something that I think had to be done for her. Um, and I think that she feels a lot better. I think that there's going to be a trend of more, uh, more women that elect this type of uh, procedure. I think more and more women are aiming towards uh, not having foreign things in their body. And um, I think that it always feels better to, uh, I don't know how you say, to, to do things the natural way, so to speak. Um, I know women always want to, to feel beautiful and I think that it's great with lip fillers and with derma fillers and Botox and all this other stuff. And I think there's, we have technology that can do just about anything. Uh, but the, there is an increasing number of women that feel really good about the body that they're given 
and they feel beautiful in what they're in and it increases, they increase their, their confidence uh, inward uh, rather than adding some, ex some, some ex external help, which is okay too. Um, but I think that, uh, I think that even Brooke is a little surprised how much confidence and how much better she would feel after getting this done. And granted, we're only less, less than a week in and I think we're gonna be real excited to share with you along the way how everything heals. So my thoughts are, it's one of the greatest things that, uh, that I think that she's done. And I think more importantly than anything, for her health and for her sanity. Because being able to actually take deep breaths now and breathe is, is gonna be life-changing for her. So, all right guys, good night.